shameful. Why don't you show your faces? Are you ashamed? Are you ashamed? All you gotta do is say no. And look at your phone and These are pictures live outside the Chateau Laurier right now. This is where the line is. These are our live cameras as police have pushed up towards the Chateau Laurier. We have team coverage tonight as police continue a more aggressive move towards the protesters, pushing them back towards Parliament Hill. Good evening. We begin with breaking news tonight. The police operation has been methodical as they move to arrest protesters and try to convince others to leave. The center of the police operation tonight, the intersection of Colonel By, Rito and Mackenzie at Sussex, that has now been retaken by police. The hundreds of officers tasked with ending the occupation emerged from under the Shaw Centre just after 11 a.m. this morning. They met protesters in the front of the Weston Hotel and they continued their slow push into the early afternoon to the corner of Rito and Sussex. CTV's Colton Prail has been there all day. He joins us live. Where are you now, Colton? We were using children as human shields. Graham, we're just ahead of the Chateau Laurier, in front of the majority of the crowd uh, that has been gathering as police slowly push them back throughout the majority of the day. Uh, and this is one of the larger gatherings that we've seen this morning. Significantly more people than we were seeing earlier today at Colonel By and at Rideau in Sussex. Uh, this is quite a much larger crowd. I was even hearing some people in the crowd speaking about how they had seen the enforcement, they'd seen the actions police were taking and they came down. They managed to walk through some of those checkpoints uh, to get here, to take part in this, to see exactly what was going on. Uh, at this point, some of that really rapid enforcement that we saw just about an hour ago, those, those quick advances from Ottawa police, from Mackenzie all the way up past the Chateau Laurier, seems to have stopped. At this point, they seem a, a little more content with their current line. We did see some of the OPP vehicles that have been stationed outside of the Senate building for about two, two and a half weeks now as we had this large gathering, this large entrenchment at the intersection of Rideau and Sussex. Those vehicles have pushed a little further back. They're now on Elgin Street uh, and OPP and police officers have pushed into the area where those vehicles were. It's unclear if that's part of another uh, strategy to continue the push forward, if they're clearing way for themselves. But a lot of the blockades that were previously in place for police, a lot of those large semis have been cleared out over the last couple of days. It's a very different scene here on Wellington tonight compared to any of the last three weekends or even just a few days ago when there were still a few big rigs here, uh, particularly right where I'm standing. A few hours ago, right where you're standing, I mean, the tone has completely changed. The line has moved. Uh, a couple of things. Talk about the, the change about 45 minutes ago. There's pepper spray, the, uh, the horse, the, the mounted unit from Metro Toronto cut through the crowd to push the line. And also what you're hearing about children on scene, because we kept hearing about that all day long, and I certainly saw some when I was out there today. Yeah, on that note, Graham, we have seen some children on scene, even here in the evening hours. It's definitely a concern. We know that Ottawa police have asked parents who have children here to please get them out. The same thing goes for child services, telling them that it's simply not safe. And when you've got the mounted unit cutting through this crowd as they push on with that rapid enforcement, it just speaks to how possibly dangerous the situation could be for young children who maybe aren't as aware of their surroundings. That rapid enforcement that you asked about happened about 45 50 minutes ago, police quickly moving up from Mackenzie all the way past the Chateau Laurier. As you mentioned, uh, there was pepper spray used by police. Police reporting that some protesters grabbed it at their weapons, and that was possibly a catalyst for that rapid movement. We also saw the mounted unit cut through the crowd here. Uh, some protesters telling officers near me that horses kicked at them as they went by, asking police what they would do about that. Obviously, officers wouldn't do anything about that. That's simply part of 
of the enforcement to this point. Uh, but it is a very different level of enforcement, a very different atmosphere around the enforcement as well compared to what we saw this afternoon, what we were reporting on on Colonel By Drive, uh, the patience that they have for media, the patience that they have for people who are in their way, and even the respectful arrests. You know, after people were pulled through the crowd, you mentioned, I mentioned, those people seemed to go quietly. They seemed to acknowledge what was happening and accept what was happening and move willingly. There's more tension now here tonight. That uh, acceptance seems to have dissipated. It's definitely a possibly volatile situation here just outside the Chateau Laurier. All right, Colton Prell reporting live. He's going to stay there. He's going to stay safe, and we will check in with him later. Continuing our special coverage of the police action to end the occupation 22 days in, police finally stepped in today, as we've been reporting, arresting more than 70 people, more than that now, and towing 21 vehicles. This is the view we've been watching all day long, especially tonight from the Weston Hotel, the key focus of the police operation for hours now. They've pushed through Rideau and Sussex. What you're looking at, of course, is the front of the Chateau Laurier. So they now have pushed their line up to the Chateau Laurier. Colton was speaking to us just past that line just a few moments ago. An ominous sign from Ottawa police. They say protesters have been trying to take their weapons and some are assaulting officers. The police also say all means of de-escalation have been used to move forward, suggesting de-escalation is no longer possible. We are continuing to watch that. CTV's Stefan Keyes is near the Western Hotel for us live tonight. Steph. Yeah, Graham, this is some of the direct result, really, of what some of the dramatic scenes are that have taken place today not too far from here. So behind me, you'll see a steady stream, a long line of police officers. You can see the Metro unit mounted officers on horseback passing through right now. And if you know the story of Noah's Ark, it seems like there's every uh, one officer per person that's been arrested and processed. They're now being loaded into cabbies at the moment and being taken away. So as we're watching this unfold, you can see that this is ongoing. We heard from Interim Chief Steve Bell earlier who said that they will be working around the clock. This operation is not going to stop until streets are cleared. What we know so far, again, is that everyone here has been placed under arrest. They've been processed. They're being loaded into police vehicles to be taken away. And you can see that one is getting ready to depart right now. And if we spin around a little bit more, looking down Colonel By just a bit more, you can see that there are also OC Transpo buses on standby. All hands are on deck for this police operation as it continues. So there are warming buses for officers as well as they face cold temperatures at the moment. Earlier today, we saw choppers in the sky and we also were able to see just how much, how many officers are here on the ground. We spoke to uh, former police chiefs as well as former OPP commissioners who say that there are probably well over more than the 1,800 officers that were requested by Chief Slowly originally, Grant. Stefan, it's a good point because, number one, uh, when I was right where you are this afternoon, it was a smaller group of people being arrested. The line was growing. Uh, but we've got to point out, once they take something, they can't give it back. And if they're going to take it, they have to take it for 24 hours. So... I, I think it's dawning on all of us the actual size of this operation because if you're going to take something like Rito Sussex Mackenzie back, push the line up, you can't just log off and finish your shift. More officers are going to need to come in and switch them out. So it would not surprise me. It, it appears to me like we're in the thousands here. And just so, just for clarity behind you, I... that is the lineup of people who have been arrested. Is that right, Steph? I don't have an ear in it. Did they? Ah, it, it, Steph Ann can't hear me. Right at the west in there at Daly, as you can see, that lineup that they're panning, those are all people who have been arrested. And if you look down the tunnel towards the Shaw Center, uh, there are basically prisoner wagons from the OPP right there, the white one, and they're lining up to process them and take them away. And all of those white vans, those are all 
uh, vans to take people away. It gives us a sense of the size of the operation, how many people are being arrested, and how long this is going to take. When I was there this afternoon, right where Stefan is, uh, some of those prisoners were waiting for more than an hour, an hour and a half. In fact, some officers were giving them uh, heat packs on their hands while they were still in handcuffs to keep their hands warm because it was so cold. We will look to get back in touch with Stefan Keyes in a few moments. He is right there in the thick of it, as are our other right the reporters. We're going to take a live shot now of downtown and that line again. We keep coming back to that because this is all you need to know about how aggressive the police have been in the last hour or so. Just this afternoon, even at 4 o'clock, they were back down closer to the Rideau Centre. They have now cut that crowd and pushed it back. The question is, how far are they going to go up Wellington? Are they going all the way to the hill tonight, or is this it for tonight? And are they going to leave it at that and then switch out the officers right there? Uh, we'll, we'll have to see, and I wouldn't be surprised if many of them are at the shadow. I've seen a lot of police coming and going. Joining us now, Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson. What are your thoughts? This is a tragic day for the city on all fronts. Um, there are good Canadians out there, and there are troublemakers out there. Um, many of the good Canadians out there uh, are now facing a life-changing situation. I'm not making apologies for the tactics, but uh, this is not a good day for Canada or for the city itself. Would you agree? You're, you're, you're quite correct, Graham. Uh, obviously, uh, this is probably the most serious uh, threat to our stability in the history of the city of Ottawa. And uh, there's no question that, um, you know, this has gone on far too long to go into the fourth weekend uh, with this kind of uh, outrageous behavior by so many people who have come here to do nothing but uh, cause harm to our residents and our small businesses. And uh, they seem to be completely insensitive to how difficult this has been for those people who had to live with blaring horns and uh, you know, homophobic and racial slurs yelled out at the residents, uh, setting a, a, a firebomb off in a, a lobby of a hotel, handcuffing at doors. This boorish behavior has to stop. And, and that's why I'm, I think a lot of people, when they saw the activity yesterday, uh, last night, and again today, where there was a sense of relief. Uh, I'm not um, you know, mm. suggesting that it's over. I think the most difficult challenge is going to be tonight and tomorrow as they head towards Wellington. But they've done a lot of really good work to get a lot of the trucks out of Wellington, Nicholas, Rito and Sussex, some of them going voluntarily and some of them being towed away. So uh, this is obviously a very tense situation we find ourselves in. And uh, we have to continue to give our support to the, the new chief and the, the police services from all across Canada who have come here to help us in our time of need. How concerned are you? Um, you, you I know you've done some walking around down there, and I've done a fair bit. Uh, there's a lot of people who are hardened, and they've said they're not going anywhere, and it's pretty clear they're not going anywhere. They, some of them seem to be spoiling for a fight. Um, the police have said all nonviolent de-escalation has been exhausted. That to me says things could get violent tonight. How worried are you about that? Well, I'm very worried, especially when I saw the tweet from the police that some of the, the protesters are trying to grab the weapons of the police officers. Uh, up until this point, notwithstanding the fact it's lasted four weeks too long, in my opinion, uh, it's been relatively peaceful. We have not had any injuries or deaths uh, during the encampment. But uh, the time for uh, turning the other cheek is over. We have to get tough with these individuals. Um, over 70 people have been arrested. Uh, we've confiscated, I believe, close to 20 vehicles. And these individuals don't seem to understand with the emergency act that is in effect now, uh, they could lose their truck. We could sell it. All the proceeds stay with the city of Ottawa. Uh, and um, they could lose their license and have a criminal record and never be able to allow to go into uh, the United States as a trucker. So they're not thinking beyond their nose on this, and, and they're doing a lot of harm to themselves, but more importantly, they're doing a lot of harm to the reputation of our city, our country, and um, the people of Ottawa. And particularly, Graham, if I could just give a quick comment about the small businesses. You know, we sometimes forget during this crisis, we're living through another crisis, namely COVID-19. And just two weeks ago, the province lifted the, the, um, uh, the ban on in-house in dining, 
And restaurants were very much looking forward to that. Well, most of the restaurants in the, the red zone have not been able to open because right. you get the idiots that come in and, you know, without a mask and, and taunting the employees. It's just a, a sad commentary and a very ugly side of Canada that uh, we haven't seen for some time. This next issue is less important than what we're facing right now, but it's important. I'm wondering how wise it was for you to push out <laughs> Diane Deans from the police services board in the midst of this. Was that really necessary? Well, uh, the council had lost the confidence of the council. Uh, the council appoints uh, and, and can withdraw an appointment. And there was serious concern that they had just appointed an interim chief, Steve Bell, and literally 24 hours later, there was a secret deal to hire another interim chief. So it didn't make any sense. There was no, uh, it was a sole source, no public consultation. The reality right. is that Steve Bell is an excellent leader and he's proven that over the course of just the last couple of days. And I think uh, he is doing a remarkable job. The police board deals with policy. They're not involved in operations. So there's no um, uh, lack of continuity uh, if there's a new chair. And in fact, we're putting in the chair who has 12 years experience, Eli El Shantiri, uh, who did a very good job uh, and was in fact the president of the uh, Police Board Association of Ontario for three years. So he's but, probably the best verse person in police board matters I, on our entire council. I understand all that. <clears throat> and, and, and I do need to let you go, but I, I wanna come back to this. Look at these pictures and then think back to that council meeting as, as this is unfolding on our streets, I, I'm just wondering if, if that was good for the city because many people are saying it was not. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the, listen, squabble with politicians, whether it's at City Hall or on the Hill, uh, you got to put that to the side. The priority I have but it right wasn't. now is to give as much protection to the people who are suffering the most in Centre Town, Lower Town, and the Byward Market, and to help those businesses and convince the federal and provincial governments to provide funding because these people are desperate for revenue, they've lost almost 100% of their revenue operating a small store or a business. So okay. we have to ensure that those businesses who in essence are locked down, not by the government, but by these truckers are given compensation so they have a fighting chance to, to open uh, in, in the next week or so. Mayor Jim Watson, appreciate your time as always. Thank you. My, my pleasure, thank you. All right. Well, police are still working to secure downtown, as we've been seeing. Another one of our reporters, of course, Natalie Van Roy, uh, is in the midst of it as well, trying to stay safe. Of course, they all are. Uh, Natalie, tell us about where you are in Wellington right now. Graham, we're right here in Wellington at Metcalf, and just an hour ago, there was a live concert going on here, and people were feeling very jubilant. They were dancing, but... Really, the mood has changed drastically within the last, I'd say, half hour to 45 minutes. There's a lot of tension, and people seem to realize that police are moving in. They're moving closer to this area, and um, we're hearing a lot of horns, a lot of revving of engines, if you can hear that right now. There's still a, a fire going on as people stay warm not too far from Parliament Hill, but we're not really seeing that party-like atmosphere that was really going on for a couple of hours this afternoon. So we are seeing a bit of tension. And just not too long ago, we were down by Elgin. We saw police talking to a couple of truckers there. We saw some uh, trucks actually leaving that area. So there seems to be some movement not too far from here. But in terms of the protesters, um, sensing some tension. Okay, so Natalie is just up from this picture here. This is our live picture of the line. You see the old train station, now the Senate. To the left of frame, of course, is the Chateau Laurier. That's where Colton was. And Natalie, um, I, I've experienced the same thing where there was almost this defiance, this party-like atmosphere even today uh, at the foot of Parliament Hill. About an hour ago, you'd say, things changed? Did people wake up to the fact that the police are getting closer? They must have. That seems to be what had happened. We heard people actually uh, running over to this area. They were yelling about what was going on down closer to the Chateau Laurier, about how police were moving in and that there were tensions happening and arrests happening. So it seems to be that people did wake up and they started realizing that uh, police are moving that line. They are moving closer to Parliament Hill. We haven't seen officers actually on the ground in this area right now, but
but it is expected that eventually uh, police will be moving in closer to Parliament Hill. Now, interesting enough, it is quiet right now, but just like f less than five minutes ago, horns were blasting and we were hearing a lot of horns. All right, that's CTV's Natalie Van Roy just up the street uh, from the Shadow Laurier. Thanks for this, and uh, we will check in with Natalie in just a few moments. Um, we want to head back to Colton Prail. The police operation uh, has been methodical as they try to arrest protesters and try to convince others to leave. Uh, here is the map, the center of the police operation tonight, the intersection of Colonel By, Riedel and McKenzie at Sussex. That's pushed up now. CTV's Colton Prail has been on the scene all day, and again, he joins us live closer down to uh, the Chateau Laurier. Uh, Colton, what are you seeing there now? Graham, things have really quieted down compared to what we saw just about an hour ago. That rapid movement from police has slowed, and it's back to what we saw earlier this afternoon, where police were content to hold that line right at McKenzie and Wellington. Uh, they're doing so now just after the Chateau Laurier. Some of the chanting and shouting that we heard from protesters, uh, it was quite loud, quite uh, aggressive in, in its nature. Uh, that's quieted down. Now it's more of the consistent freedom chants that we've heard uh, throughout the day uh, again more excitement it's it's settled in the tension that we experienced about an hour ago has kind of alleviated itself a little bit police uh, seem content to hold this line we haven't seen much in the way of scuffles the mounted unit hasn't been back through since it came through that first time uh, the armored vehicle has not pushed forward at all uh, and we haven't seen a, a large swath of people coming back either if anything there's more foot traffic coming towards this group behind me it's one of the larger groups that we've seen today uh, is significantly larger than what we saw on Colonel By and at Rideau in Sussex. Uh, and this group keeps growing as more and more people make their way down from the main protest, the main convoy, towards uh, the intersection here just at where Wellington turns into Rideau uh, police line just after that. There's a number of signs, there's a number of chants, uh, but the atmosphere, that tension really does seem to have dissipated over the last uh, 30 minutes or so, Grant. All right, Colton, I want you, uh, and you're getting some harassment behind you there. That's fine. That's fine. People are moving on. Uh, we've seen a lot of that over the last couple of weeks, and we're going to just keep doing our job. Um, Colton, if, if we could get your camera just to move to that crowd again as you were panning off, um, how many people would you say? How many people would you say are there? It looks like several hundred. You're saying they've grown because, yeah, there it is. They've grown from, yeah. because a lot of people from Natalie's area have now moved down to the police line, which is, is not the best thing to do when you've got the mounted unit, you've got pepper spray, and you've got an aggressive police force that is saying there's no more um, nicey nice time here. We've got to move through here, and they're, they're planning to do that. That's exactly it. You know, Graham, I saw a young girl riding her bike down Wellington towards the police line with her parents. We've seen a number of people pushing towards that line. Uh, you know, that's just it. There are several hundred people now right in front of that police line. It's not the area to be. We know police have said that the enforcement this weekend is going to be very different to what people in Ottawa are used, for, used to, very different to what we've seen up until this point. We're actually seeing uh, more police officers now just making their way up the stairs of the locks into the back of this group. They'll be coming into your uh, under our shot shortly here. Uh, it looks like they're moving actually up to this sidewalk here, heading a little closer okay. to Natalie and to Metcalf, Parliament Hill area. Uh, but that's just it. There are significantly more people down at this police line uh, compared to what we saw earlier in the day. It's a much larger crowd. It also makes it much more difficult for police to move through safely uh, without ensuring there's too many incidents or injuries. Uh, and as we saw earlier, they did have to use the mounted unit. They did have to use pepper spray. Uh, they're clearly willing to do that enforcement if necessary. And, and it's not unusual. We see a group of officers. They they tend to, to, um, to walk through in groups like that. They may just be transitioning out of the area. We don't know if that means anything that they're going up uh, Wellington. CTV's Colton Prail right on the bridge at Wellington over the locks. We will be checking in with you uh, later. Thanks so much for this. All right. Well, the lockdown downtown created major problems with traffic today. The perimeter cordoning off center town to all but essential movement. Here is the map of the secure area. Wellington Street to the north, to the Queensway to the south, and Queen Elizabeth Drive 
to the east to Bronson in the west. That entire red area locked down nearly three square kilometers. Only those who live or work in the area can get in. Here is the Queensway right now. It's not moving very well. This is at Bronson, and this has been the story throughout the day for people trying to get around. Off-ramps have been closed. Traffic has been a nightmare. CTV's Leah LaRock has been following it for us. Leah. Well, Graham, I traveled around this secure red zone and its perimeter all day, and it's very clear that police only want those who live or work in the downtown or in the core in that zone. They've been checking cars and drivers, and they're blocking off many key roads, and this has caused a lot of bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. Queensway off-ramps are blocked, and there are checkpoints at major intersections, all to secure the downtown. Oh, it's taken forever. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm getting tired of it. There was bumper to bumper gridlock traffic all day. Some having commutes that were triple the time it usually takes. Um, maybe for 45 minutes? Yeah, coming from the West End. Oh, gee. I work down here, so. Oh, what was your commute like today? Horrible. It got so bad, Stéphane St. Jean parked his car and did the rest of his commute on foot. I got stuck on the bridge for about an hour, then I made it to my parking spot, and now uh, I have to walk the rest. But I think the walking part will be the easiest part today. There are 100 checkpoints set up on roads in an area from the Queensway to Wellington Street and Bronson Avenue to the Rideau Canal. Police only letting those who live or work in the core through. This picture showing a truck carrying gas getting turned away. The LRT also shut down from Pimacy to Herdman. So I caught my bus a bit later, but anyway, I got on that bus and then I didn't find out till really I was on route that the LRT wasn't working. There were near misses as drivers tried to escape the bottlenecks. Frustration clearly mounting. I worked down at the hospital and you know, I, I tried to come home last night at midnight from the hospital and all the highway exits are blocked off with police vehicles and I'm driving around in a blizzard. Patients will be tested as checkpoints are expected to last for days. It's crazy. It feels like we're in an alternate dimension, but I'm glad. I think this is something that should have happened a few weeks ago. And, uh... A recent development tonight, the Alexandra and Portage Bridge is closed to pedestrians. You can only walk across the McDonald Cartier Bridge. It is important to note that these checkpoints aren't just at the perimeter of the secure zone. For example, let's take Elgin Street. You have one near the highway, then halfway up near Gladstone, and then another one again at Laurier. So the message is don't go downtown. And if you live there, you will be stuck in traffic. Graham. Caught a number of people just waiting. Everybody yeah. understands why, uh, but you caught some frustration there for sure. CTV's Leo Rock, thanks for this. We're going to take a break, break, quick break. Before we do, uh, police alleging that a bicycle was thrown at one of their horses. That person has been charged with intentionally trying to injure a police service animal. We will return downtown where the operation continues. Stay with us.